Now for the momentum and kinetic energy flow comparisons. Both momentum and kinetic energy are carried by mass flow. So we can deal with these now that we have the mass flow comparison done. One way to think of momentum flow is as the force which would act on a hypothetical barrier which captures all of the mass flow and brings the fluid velocity to zero. We can similarly think of the kinetic energy flow as the power that would be obtained by a hypothetical ideal turbine array which brings the fluid to rest reversibly. So that's a little bit difficult to, to swallow sort of on faith, so let me draw a sketch to help illustrate this idea. In particular, what I'm going to do is compare the barrier and turbine array between the actual flow and the EIF at constant mass flow. So we'll start with the real flow. Here is E, here's our velocity profile. So here's N E. And this is U of S. Then the barrier, if I could make some light flash bonds, just to follow from the height zero to N E. The barrier will look like this. and the flow will hit this and be deflected away, basically losing all of its S momentum. That will generate a force F on the barrier. Or we could have the turbine array where we have an infinite number of infinitely small turbines, all of which are ideal, which extract all of the kinetic energy from the flow. Of course, in practice, that can never happen, but this is an idealization, a thought experiment. Then, if we look at the EIF, And I'll draw the actual velocity profile as a dashed background here. Here's delta star. Here we have a constant velocity profile. That extends from delta star to N. Can I draw my dash lines across just to help me? Yeah. So for the barrier, the barrier will now extend only from. Delta star to N E. We'll do the same thing. It'll capture all of the force, uh, all the the momentum, and will result in a force F I for inviscid flow. And the turbine array will extract power E dot I. Will likewise be shorter. Now, to obtain the force F or Fi or the power E dot or E dot I, we need to integrate the momentum and energy fluxes. So 
So for the EIF, fi is the integral of u sub i dm dot i, which is the integral from delta star to ne of rho i u i squared dn, but this is just rho e u e squared times ne minus delta star. Similarly, e dot i is the integral of one half u i squared dm dot i and we can write that as the integral from delta star to any of one half rho i u i cubed dn but again because the velocity is constant we get one half u e or rho e u e cubed n e minus delta star for the real flow, we start with the force, F is the integral of u dm dot, which is the integral from 0 to ne of rho u squared dm. Now, if we write rho u squared, as rho e u e squared minus u e rho e u e minus rho u minus rho e minus u rho u, which seems a bit arbitrary, but in fact starts to give terms that look like what's going on in the inviscid case. Um, we can see this is actually just the same expression because if we expand this out, this is rho e u squared minus rho u u e squared plus rho u u e uh, minus rho u u e plus rho u squared. So these terms cancel and these terms cancel and this is just a long and long-winded way of writing rho u squared. So if we do that, then what we get is that f is the integral of 0 and e rho e u e squared dn minus u e integral from 0 to n e rho e u e minus rho u dn minus the integral from 0 to n e of rho u my, uh, rho, u e minus u rho u dn. So if we collect the terms and see what we have, we can see that f is rho e u e squared, because none of this depends on the integral, times n e, minus u e rho e u e delta star minus rho e u e squared theta, where theta is the momentum thickness. Zero to any one minus u over u e rho u over rho e u e dn. And we can see that these first two terms of f are just fi. So that f is fi minus p. And where p is this integral from 0 to ne of rho e, or u e minus u times rho u dn, which is rho e u e squared theta. And we call this the momentum defect. And before interpreting that, let's do the same thing for the kinetic energy flow. So 
So e dot is one half integral of one half u squared dm dot, which is zero to n e, one half rho u cubed dn. And using the same kind of expansion as we did for the force, we can write this as zero to n e, one half rho e u e cubed dn minus one half u e squared integral from zero to n e rho e u e minus rho u dn minus integral from zero to n e one half u e squared minus u squared rho u dn. Now again, we can simplify here. We can write this first term as one half rho e u e cubed n e. The second term is one half u e squared times rho e u e delta star. And the third term we can write as one half rho e u e cubed theta star, where theta star is the kinetic energy thickness. Defined as the integral from zero to any of one minus u squared over u e squared rho u over rho e u e dn. So then we can uh, again see that the first two terms are just e dot i. So e dot is e dot i minus k. Where k is the integral from zero to n e one half u e squared minus u squared rho u d n, which we write as one half rho e u e cubed theta star. And we call this the kinetic energy defect. So the actual flow has momentum and kinetic energy flows, which are less than those of the equivalent inviscid flow, even when they're done on a same mass flow basis by P, the momentum energy defect, and K, the kinetic energy defect, resp respectively. And we'll see that P is related to the profile drag, of the airfoil or body, while K is related to both the profile drag and viscous dissipation in the boundary layer. And we'll explore these more when we start looking at the governing equations for the boundary layer next time.